Welcome to I Would Uncut, an event designer's podcast. I'm your host, Lucy Molina, and in today's podcast episode, we're going to be talking about the power and passion. But before we get started, make sure to follow us, subscribe on any platform you're listening to us on or watching. So in today's podcast episode, I want you to think about the last time you were making a purchase or even hearing someone's idea. And I want you to think about how influenced you were into making that purchase or even just so hyped from seeing their energy. What you actually were buying into was their passion. And that is the power that it really has. The fact that it's able to persuade, motivate, inspire, or even make you feel the same emotion they do. When it comes to passion in anything you do, it is important that when you are doing it for design, you think about the fact that it requires everything and more when you're working with clients and making their dream day come to life or whether you're working, let's say, with a corporate company where you're bringing their whole entire idea or concept to life. I want to talk about the journey that I've had of making my actual career and the passion it took to make this happen. I always think back. I wish there was always a school that focused on event design, like the Institute of Wedding and Event Design. I had a different route to take. I actually had to go to school for business and also merchandising and design for fashion in order to get to this avenue. With my experience in the industry, it's been now, what, 10 years? And I say 10 years professionally because I don't count my amateur years. <laughs> um, because even if I look back at some of the designs, I'm like, I don't want to see them ever again. <laughs> and I don't know how many of you can relate to that, but it's okay because at the end of the day, those are your learning blocks, right? Those are the like pieces of like experience that you look at and you're like, I did that and I've grown so much and I have so much more to give. And wow, I've gone so far with it. So when it comes down to it, you want to think about First, defining your passion. What are you passionate about? As I mentioned in the last podcast episode, this podcast is all about the designer, you guys, those that are either new to the industry, experienced, that are just passionate about creating special moments because that's what designers do. They create magical, captivating moments that make someone feel an emotion when they see a beautiful reveal of a wedding design or even a birthday party and etc. So let's start with first defining your passion. I knew from the moment early on that I wanted to get into the design field. And I always thought to myself, this is going to be a little tricky, especially when you come from a more traditional background, right, with your family, where they want you to study business or become a lawyer or a doctor. And I'm like, no, I want to be the creative. I want to be the free spirit who does things differently. And that meant me focusing on my passion and sticking so solid to it. No matter what anyone thought, no matter what anyone said, I'm like, I'm going to be a designer, a designer that makes a difference. And through that process of designing, it took a lot of working on side projects. It always starts with family. So shout out to all of you that understand exactly what I'm talking about when you're designing for family. You're like, I'm pretty good at this, but I need to start charging. I need to make money because we can't do it for free the rest of our lives. That's not the way it works. <laughs> so when it comes down to it, it starts with the family and then you start thinking, I can make a career out of this. So then you start thinking with this passion, how do I make it into an actual business or how do I make profit from it? So when you're defining your passion, you're like, I'm good. Great. How can I make money? Like I said, you worked with your family. What's next? You then have to start thinking, how can I make it into an actual structure of a business? How can I actually make a livelihood out of this? So as I mentioned with me, my path was going to school. I believe education is the most powerful tool. It's something that no one can take away from you. Because I'll never forget what one of the biggest mentors I've had in my life said to me, which was, when you have money and you're rich, you, let's say, start a business and you open and you invest. Great. But when you have the knowledge, someone could, let's say if you lose all the money, I don't know, the stock crashes, whatever, the market, there's so many things, other factors that we can control. You're able to start over because you have the knowledge and the recipe of doing it. So therefore, that's why it's such an invaluable 
resource to have is knowledge. So you first would want to look into getting more perfection in your craft, meaning practice is a big thing as well. Practicing as much as you can. Another thing is putting yourself out there because what good is it? And this happens to all creatives. And make sure to um, comment if you resonate with this, that you have so many ideas and you always think about the things you can do, but you don't do them. Because creatives, we're constantly think of everything we want to do. But the problem with creatives, we all have a problem with putting it into action, putting it into an actual game plan and going for it. And that's a way, kind of a lack of passion, because that passion is what's going to push you to keep going and actually making money out of it. Because if you're able to, you're able to move on to the next step, which is what we all want. So let's backtrack, like I said. So I go to school, get the degree, and then as I'm in school, I got so focused into the fashion world. Mind you, when I went to school, there wasn't anything about design. It was only hospitality management, and I knew that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to actually work in creating, so I had to find other ways. So I went into visual merchandising courses. So for a long time, I was designing window displays for department stores. And I was like, this is so interesting. I'm having to do this for visual displays, but in a way I'm actually bringing something to life that's in a small scale versus doing a big event. Then I also took on styling courses and things like that, which was doing fashion show production. And that's where I felt I'm like I made it. This is, where, <laughs> this is what I wanted. I wanted to work in design, but it went through fashion show production. And as I constantly always work in doing, you know, these productions, I get student volunteers. And then I was like realizing a lot of the students wanted that hands-on experience. And that's why it's such a full circle moment with the Institute of Wedding Event Design to be here and how passion can take you so far. Because I'm working with a school that literally is all about hands-on, which I think is amazing. And so I'd get all these student volunteers and then the university is like, how would you feel about taking on a couple classes and becoming a professor? Because basically I was grabbing volunteers and teaching them how to do it. And then I guess they loved and learned a lot that they went back to um, the director cha uh, chair department and told them like, she should be a teacher here. And I've never had teaching experience prior to this. So then next thing you know, in 2013, I started teaching my first university course in design and though to make matters worse it was uh for graduate level students i was like oh my god i am freaking out i'm like how can this be like oh my god what am i doing <laughs> but i was so excited obviously i had to go through the training process i had their credentials with you know studying business and, and design but to be in front of students i was like i don't want to just be a teacher that talks and, and no, I wanted to be a teacher that actually showed them and felt that, you know, really translated the process of design. Like I wanted my passion to exude through. And one of the most rewarding things is always hearing students when I was teaching in the classes is like, I love how passionate you are about design, that it makes me excited to go out there into the industry and work in design because of the way that you're still excited about it, the way you talk about it, it's that passion. And that's to show you how important it is that you like feel that passion, that you, you practice it and you nurture it. So it's now been 10 years of me being in the education sector. That is insane to think of how long I've been teaching. And nothing has been more rewarding than working with designers uh, that are passionate and most importantly that learn and are motivated in some way. And I've been a part of their story in some sector of their whole entire you know, career path. And that's amazing to me. That's the most rewarding thing. And that's why even here talking to you guys today, it's so important that you focus on this passion that you have in design. Once you have found and defined it, then the next steps you have to take is making sure that you put it into a proactive plan. It's like, if you're going to be having your own business, a business owner, think about how you can make a difference. The thing is, when it comes to design, you don't want to just think, I'm making something pretty. You always do things for a purpose and because it is an artistry form. 
So it's very important that you focus on that. You also want to make sure to engage with your clients when you are working in design. That's a huge difference. The number one thing I love hearing is when clients say, I loved my designer. She exuded passion for what she does. She takes on the design as if it's her own wedding day or her own special day. And that's what's so important is that everything you do, you do it with purpose, intent, and passion with everything. And that it like literally bleeds out in everything you do. Maybe you're also thinking right now, I love everything I'm hearing. I'm passionate about design. I'm ready to do this, but I'm too scared to leave my nine to five. Or I'm working a completely different sector and going into design sounds a little too overwhelming. And I want to tell you that you are able to still work that nine to five and pursue your passion career. Just like I married the two, which that's why I always say, if you follow your passion, things will fall into place. Just like design and teaching fell into place in my life and it became the most rewarding career path I could ever take. And that's the same that will happen to you. Like a great, great woman has once said, which you all may know, Oprah, she said, when you pursue the things that you're most passionate about, money will follow. And there's nothing wrong with, like I said, working that nine to five. Listen, I had to pay bills. I was working nine to fives and jobs I didn't like and would do my little side hustle projects on the weekends or after five. And I will say, you need to make sure that you tune out the noise and you stay focused with your passion. You think about, hey, if I'm on social media, instead of lurking or you know checking out another designer's work, how about you start posting some of your work, make a business page. Uh, you know, even think about making a TikTok. What you have when you are so passionate about something, that means that it's your calling. I always say that. It's like that noise. You're like, like you're not able to tune it out no matter what you do. Like everything you do always comes back to that same path of like, hey, can you design my wedding? Hey, come on. Can you design my baby shower? And you're known as a designer because people see it. And that's why I always say your talent makes noise. And that's why it is so, so important that you follow that through and you find ways to actually showcase it. There's something always funny that I say in the class to the students. And it's so true because it's something my grandmother always told me. And this is why I feel like I became such an outgoing individual when I was young. My grandmother always said that closed mouths do not get fed. And that means that if you're there quiet with all this potential and all this you know, talent, but no one knows of it, then it's non-existent. And I was just like, wow. I was like, that's crazy to think. Like, she's right. So if I'm, if you're not out there promoting yourself, if you're not out there, you know, putting in the work and pursuing your passion, putting yourself on social media, like putting yourself out there, giving that exposure that you are a designer and owning that title, then years and decades could go by. And I don't want that for you. I do not want that for you. I want you to start now because it is never too late to go for your passion and to really put into full throttle. And another thing to look at is if you are, let's say on social media or you're doing research, look at what other, you know, businesses are doing. Maybe in your area, there is like a need or a lack of a service. I always think back of the student that she wanted to be a wedding designer so bad and she was great at design, but in her area, she, there wasn't, it, her like her actual market, I would say was a lot of more like family, like smaller family homes, um, a lot of, you know, families with kids. And she even had um, a child. And what she realizes is when I told her, I'm like, what can you bring that's different in terms of service? I know you're passionate about design, but right now in this stage of your life, are you still passionate about weddings? And she's like, no, I'm I'm not. I, I know that's what I'm good at. And I'm like, that doesn't mean that's the only thing you're good at designing. You're creative. That means that you have the skill set and the talent to do many things within the design sector. You could be designing not only weddings, you could do kid events. You could do corporate events. There's so many different avenues. So I remember that night she went home and started thinking about it. 
She just knew that she wanted to make money because she wasn't making enough in the wedding field in her area. So then she came back the next day and she's like, I realized when I went to the PTA meeting last night for my kids event that there's a lack of children event designers. And I'm like, okay, tell me more. Because as we're, you know, I always feel like speaking out what you're feeling and stuff with someone who's also in the same field will help you kind of get all your ideas together. So long story short, she is now an event designer for the children's sector. She actually opened her business in doing TPs, like such as sleepover party events and actual spa uh, events for children. And it's become a booming business. Like she does the, you know, TPs, any type of custom design. And she also has like the cutest little mobile spa for children. And it's a booming business. She's been featured on TV and everywhere you could possibly think of. And it was all through an idea. And because she's passionate about design and she felt she needed to start in a new sector with, you know, a new demographics. And that is not, there's nothing wrong with that. That is okay. And that's what I mean that wherever you are now, think about it. I love design. Where, what can I do with this? What avenue can I take? And this is just one example of many other students that have had different experiences. And it's to show you that you already have the skill set within you, you have the talent, but it's time to follow through on this passion and actually go forth in making a whole career out of it and pursuing what you love. Because I truly believe that when you love, love what you do, you wake up excited in the morning to go to work. You put out such an energy and it's the same reason that when somebody approaches you with a product that you're not even liking at first, but you hear them talk about it, you buy into because you see their passion. You're just like, oh my God, I want to feel what they're feeling or I want what they have. So it's that same thing again. So again, next time, think about your passion, go for it. It is never too late. And don't spend decades thinking about what could have, should have, would have, and go for it now. Thank you so much to all of you for listening or watching today's podcast, The Power and Passion. We are I Would Uncut, an event designer's podcast, and I cannot wait to see you in the next episode. Make sure to follow, like, and subscribe to stay connected.